In this video I'm going to talk about streaming data into ArcGIS Pro. So a lot of maps we can connect to and stream to ArcGIS from the internet just like you would stream a movie into your uh, computer or your television at home. Uh, the map comes in, just the pieces of it we need, it's stored on the device temporarily and then it goes away. Um, this map, uh, topographic, that appears anytime you insert a new map in ArcGIS Pro this is a streaming map uh, that's just put there so you have uh, some kind of base map context of uh, what you're viewing. Uh, and you can zoom and pan around it and explore it and it's a very rich and detailed map. In fact, uh, this will stream in all the way down to um, the very uh, neighborhood level, uh, showing lots and lots of data. And streaming maps like this can be a way to uh, very quickly get a lot of data that would be difficult for you to obtain on your own. Uh, creating a very detailed and nice looking base map like this would take lots of layers and time. So it's very useful that we have these and uh, Esri provides a number of these for free to stream in. Now you could pay uh, additional money uh, for a premium ArcGIS Online subscription and you could get um, better types of layers to stream in. For example, very recent or detailed imagery of uh, parts of the world. Uh, but we get some pretty good uh, ones that are free to use here as well. Um, those are visible under the base map tab, so I can switch this to imagery of this part of Yakima. Uh, whoops, let me change the explore button. There we go, that's a little easier. Uh, so we can see the different land use, uh, land cover patterns of Yakima by doing this. Um, and uh, most of these layers are made by Esri. Uh, this light gray canvas one is a really nice one for thematic mapping because uh, our base map layers fade to the back and so we can put the thematic layers on top, really have them jump out visually. Uh, and then we have even OpenStreetMap uh, can stream uh, into ArcGIS Pro, which can be useful if you want to use uh, that data set, which in some places is the most detailed data that we have available. Um, not necessarily in Yakima, there's still a lot of mapping work uh, that you can do there, which is why actually uh, the place where I like to work on OpenStreetMap most is in Yakima for that reason. Um, but other places uh, it might be the only uh, detailed data available. So those are some examples of uh, base layers that you can stream into ArcGIS Pro. Now these are all coming in as tiled map images. So they're small square images that stream into your browser, or in this case into ArcGIS Pro, and ArcGIS Pro puts them together and shows them to you in a seamless fashion. And it's pretty quick for uh, uh, to stream an image across the web into a program. Um, you see a little blink there, that's because the program itself has to process all those images. Uh, but this is a pretty slick way to um, have some data in our map. Now we can add other data and stream it in. Let me show you a couple ways to do that. So if you just go to the Add Data button and click Data, um, you will see an option here called Living Atlas. Uh, these are other layers that Esri has put online to stream. So you can browse through here and see what kind of stuff is available. Uh, some of the ones are tiled layers, other ones are actually vector features that you're going to stream in. Um, let me find a layer that we could stream in. How about USA uh, zip code boundaries 2017? Okay, we'll see what that looks like. So we're going to add those. There's probably quite a few of them. Uh, actually here it zoomed us out. And uh, this is an issue with streaming vector features into the uh, into your program. Uh, this is actually downloading all the coordinate information of the boundaries of those zip codes and all the attributes. And you see how slow it's going uh, because it has to transfer all that information across the internet. It's no longer transferring images, square images. And you can see those zip codes uh, filling in bit by bit. So this one is not the most appropriate uh, layer for streaming in many cases. Uh, let's try something better. So uh, we'll go to data and we'll go to living atlas and let's search for area code. There's much fewer of those so maybe this will go better. So here a legend has populated with information about the area codes and we're just waiting for them to appear. I might zoom in here. Uh, so that it doesn't have to load all of them and we'll see how it goes. Notice that the base map of the US has loaded uh, much more quickly than the actual area codes. That's because the base map, even though it has a lot of data in it, is, is loading those tiles which are very fast and uh, to stream in the coordinate information for the area codes 
uh, it takes a little bit longer. In fact, my guess is that the computer may still be trying to process the request that we made uh, for all of those zip codes. So now these area codes have finally appeared and we can explore them. Uh, one thing I do here, I have the attributes panel displayed. So if you click this button, you'll see a panel like this. And you can select a feature. Notice I have selected Idaho. It's now highlighted. You can't do that with just tiled image layers. Okay, they are images that, that don't know anything about the, the shapes on them. Uh, but you can do that with streamed uh, vector features. So I've highlighted this, and now I can see all the attributes. This is area code 208. If we go to Washington, we can see our beloved uh, 509 here. And uh, we can explore the rich attribute information that was streamed into the browser in that way. So in this video, we've seen two different types of streaming layers. Uh, we've seen streaming uh, tiled base maps uh, that give us a lot of rich uh, geographic uh, background information. And we've also seen uh, streaming vector features uh, that can give us attribute information. But we have to be careful with that because if they have a lot of geometry, uh, they can slow down our, our program.